Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and today we're going to check out some new backpacks and do a whole lot of talking about backpacking and camping, because I have got a ton of mail, mountains of it. It'll be a red letter day when the postman blows mail call. All right, so here we are with my big old pile of packages and letters from viewers. A lot more than usual, actually, because, well, two reasons, really. Uh, recently, I've been away quite a bit. I did my budget backpacking trip, which the video is out now. You can check that out. I got a link up here. And then I also was at our annual spring cabin trip, which, by the way, for those of you interested, I know some of you on this channel really enjoy that. It's posted on my dad's channel. That's White Rook 85. We go up to the cabin twice a year for sure as a group. There's five of us. Uh, we do a deer trip in November and we do the spring trip usually in May, early April. So that's just a heads up to anybody out there who's been looking forward to that. Go ahead and check that out. I'll link that up top as well over on my dad's channel. And if you haven't seen those videos before and you're interested in cabin trip, check it out. It's myself, my dad, three other guys in the crew. And for the November trip, it's deer hunting. But the spring trip really is just, we do a little turkey hunting actually, and we do some fishing. I don't really fish, but the other guys do. So it's a good time. Check that out if you're interested. So because of those two trips, I am a bit behind on mail. Now, I usually open everything live on camera. Some of this I already opened because I wanted to get stickers back to people before I left. And then on top of that, the second reason is I actually filmed a mail call with some of this. And uh, I won't get into it, but technical difficulties, the footage is lost. So some of this I'll be uh, showing today. There's a giant box here. I know what's in there. Uh, there's some other stuff that I don't know what it is, and uh, let's just get into it, shall we? And we'll talk about some backpacking and camping subjects as we go. Maybe we'll look at some viewer comments if I have time, and maybe do some talking about my recent budget backpacking gear list trip video, which accompanies my budget backpacking gear list video. All right, um, let's work our way through here. You know what? I'm just going to go right into it from the gate and open up the big item here, and I know what this is. It actually arrived while I was away and it's new backpack to check out and test on the channel. This is coming pretty light. I believe it's two and a half pounds, a little under two and a half pounds. This is a Gregory backpack. Gregory is the brand that my wife bought as her first backpack years ago. She got a heavier grade one. It's like seven pounds. It's the Gregory Diva. It's hanging right over there on the wall. This guy, they're really uh, stepping it up with the lightweight. Gregory, as far as I can tell over the years, is very high quality, full featured, just like a Cadillac of backpacks. But personally, I've always kind of shied away because, well, A, I'm, I'm a little cheap, and B, the real reason is, lately, because I like lighter packs. And a lot of those really nice Gregory packs with all those features and nice fabrics, like I said, can be six pounds and up. This guy right here, though, is 2.40 something pounds. Let's call it a little under two and a half pounds. It's the Gregory Optic model. Feels really good. Mine in particular here is the 48 liter model. They do have a 58 liter as well. I find myself getting by just fine with 40-ish liter packs for ultralight backpacking because a lot of ultralight is not just buying expensive lightweight gear. Actually, for the most part, in my opinion, it's omitting items that you don't really need and finding items that are redundant that you can use for multiple purposes. So that means typically not just low weight, but low volume. Uh, you want to have room for food and stuff. My trips are usually two to three days. If I'm going with friends, maybe four days max. I do kind of long weekend trips like that. So packing a bunch of food in here should be no problem because my other pack, what did I have years ago? an Osprey Hornet 46. It's in a lot of my early videos. That pack I kind of migrated away from because it was nice, but it was back in like 2011, I think that pack came out, something like that. And at the time it was great, but the pads on it, the way they got the weight down on that guy was the pads were really, um, it was still a good pack, but it just didn't have a lot of support in the shoulders. And the hip belts couldn't really call them hip belts. They were more like a buckle that went around your waist and it happened to have some pockets on it, not a whole lot of support. So what I found over the years is you want a really light pack, but a lot of times if you're comparing packs, maybe one pack is a pound or a pound and a half more. Back in the day, I would instantly go, oh no, I, I don't want that. I want the lighter pack. But 
I've found that some of the packs are heavier because they have more support and that can make it actually feel like you're carrying less weight because you're more comfortable. So there's more to it than um, it seemed to me at first at least. So I'm excited to try this out. I'm looking at the back of it here. It kind of reminds me, my buddy Mike has an, uh, he has a pack kind of like this. He has a 58 liter um, Osprey Exos. And the new thing nowadays seems to be to have the back open. So I can tell right away from looking at this, it's got like a rigid kind of mesh material that would go flat against your back here. That's interesting. And then the actual structural kind of frame, or I should say panel back there, is about, looks like one to two and a half inches away from your back to allow some airflow back there. Because I know a lot of you out there who've been backpacking have realized that what's the first thing that gets hot? It's your back, because you get that big old pack against you and your back's not breathing. This will be my first pack that is set up like that, so I'm excited to try that. I actually didn't even think of that until I'm seeing it now kind of live in person. That's pretty neat. First impression is the, these are some real pads. Not as thick as a larger Gregory pack, but that's because you're gonna carry probably three times the weight in a pack like that. But this looks pretty rigid and stout. It's basically a mini lightweight version of a Gregory pack. I'm pretty excited to have this. They did send this to me for testing and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take this out on a trip and load it up into a ultralight backpacking trip somewhere. So that's just a first look at that. Anybody out there that's had any experiences with this Gregory pack, let me know. I think it's relatively new. So I'm excited about that as well. I won't go too deep on it, but that's my first item there. So let me know what you think out there about lightweight pack options. Um, this one's looking pretty cool at first glance, so I'm really liking it. Like I said, they have good quality on these things. So I'm excited to have a lightweight version. Speaking of packs, actually, this has shown up on the channel and a couple videos, other gear reviews, because I was carrying my stuff in it, but I never really opened it on mail call. This is a new pack of mine as well, and this is a GORUCK GR1 backpack. Looks pretty nondescript, right? Well, that's the point, actually. This thing is actually super, like, built like a tank, rugged, and compact as well, of course, but it has a lot more features to meet the eye, and believe it or not, this is actually fully kitted out for my next backpacking trip that I'll be taking before I take out the Gregory. And it's under nine pounds. And this is for my stealth backpacking gear list video I'll be doing. So similar to the budget backpacking gear list video where I did the gear list vid and then the trip to go along with it to show off how all the gear works. I'm gonna do that with stealth backpacking. Just something fun. I wanted to challenge myself to come up with a gear list, like I said, just for fun, where I kind of look like a day hiker nondescript fly under the radar and go into the woods and you can just camp somewhere and uh i don't know just for fun now some people view stealth camping as meaning illegal camping i'm not recommending you do that but sometimes you just want to you know be low key so this right here is pretty cool and it's about 21 liters which was a challenge i had to go for volume instead of space but that video is coming up so stay tuned for that and it's under nine pounds it ended up lightweight anyway because once again it forced me with the 21 liters to omit items. All right, let's get this box out of the way and get into some other mail here. And I'll go kind of quick because I got a lot. First up, this is from Jellyfoot. Been an avid hiker for several years and your channel's been very informative. My first major overnight trip was following your cat skills trip video. That was a long time ago and that was my first trip ever with a hammock. It was a lot of fun. I think that was 2012. So if you want to check that out and see me use a hammock for the first time, that's my Catskills video. Feel free to check that out. And also it looks like so far Jellyfoot has done seven of the 48 4,000 footers in the White Mountains. And he gives me a list here of all of them. Oh no, this is a list of recommendations for future trips. All right, I'll read these off and then you guys let me know um, your thoughts on these and maybe if I should go. Mount Whiteface in the White Mountains. All right, Mount Moriah, White Mountains. I, you know I can do both of those. I, I don't mind driving up there. Presidential Traverse. I've never... Let me see. A straightforward Presidential Traverse? No, I don't think I've ever done that. I've probably hit just about all those peaks here and there over the years with various loops, but a classic Presidential Traverse I haven't done yet. I'll have to do sometime. I think maybe I'll challenge myself and do it in winter one day. Mount Greylock in Massachusetts. I haven't done any backpacking in Massachusetts, so if any, and it's closer a little bit than the White Mountains, so if anybody has recommendations for uh, Massachusetts, please let me know. Mount Greylock I have heard of before. Oh, and they have a lodge at the top with cheeseburgers. Sold. And then the Grand Tetons. 
Would love to. It's another one of those things I've, I've said a lot on these mail call videos. It's just a question of finding the right opportunity to get a flight out there. So thank you, Jellyfoot. Very cool. Next up, Jeff in Ohio. He mentions that he's been watching the videos for a couple of years and I've gotten a lot of useful info. One downloaded GPX track helped uh, helped us find a campsite in Red River Gorge when my 79-year-old father-in-law was struggling. Jeff, I think I actually remember talking to you. It was either PM on YouTube or comment section or something. Unless this is a major coincidence, I, I think I actually remember talking to you. I'm glad that GPX data came in handy. That's why I record that for all those trips. People find it useful. Those are all on my website on the GPS page. So thanks, Jeff. And people often ask what GPS I'm using. It's a Garmin Oregon 650. Although I think they're on to the 700 series now. This one's from Dawn, and she just wants to do a quick thank you. Uh, helped inspire me to backpack, and she is going to be doing the Tahoe Rim Trail, 165 miles in June. So that's coming up pretty soon now. Uh, watch and learn from your channel. Mike has taught me to make sure I have all my gear, like shoes and a sleeping bag. <laughs> yeah, yep. Uh, learn from our mistakes, people. I've often said this is not a channel about how to backpack. It's just... Uh, watching someone try to backpack and you can learn from my mistakes really can't wait for my cheeseburger sure you can see how far behind i am i'm sure you've gotten yours already done hope you enjoy it and this one's from karen in georgia got a picture here of uh, blood mountain in georgia very cool love to know if i plan on venturing down to georgia on an adventure it's just a little beyond my kind of 11 hour drive time limit i think getting down to georgia i've looked into it before but one of these days, I'm going to have to do that. i got to expand my horizons, right? Nice picture, too. Len, a.k.a. Duck, he says, Love the videos. Ordered a cheeseburger shirt and would like a sticker. No problem. Uh, and he has three questions. Okay. When are you going... All right, this is good. This is some conversation here. When are you going to do a review of the Outdoor Vitals Mummy Pod? Your reviews hold a lot of water and I'm uh, when I make equipment decisions. All right, so the Outdoor Vitals Mummy Pod have basically featured in three videos right now. And they're both an hour piece, so I know it's a big commitment. But over the course of those three videos, I think you can pretty much get my thoughts on it. I do still need to do a standalone review. Although I reached out to the company because they sent it to me for review and um, gave them a heads up about the videos I've done so far. I haven't heard a response from them. Um, so hopefully they're okay with my um, critiques so far, which is not a bad thing. I guess watch the videos. There's a reason to use that because it's very versatile. I don't think, like a lot of things in life... And I don't know you should judge it this way. I don't think it's the same, in my opinion, as a separate top and bottom underquilt. That, to me, is the ultimate setup for maneuverability, comfort, ease of setup and whatnot. Although, it's pretty easy to set up the mummy pod. The mummy pod is a little more constrictive because it goes on the whole hammock. But the advantage is, if you're somebody just starting out and you just want to buy one thing, and they're also very affordable, I think it's around 200 or less for the whole system instead of buying a separate top and bottom quilt and it is still made out of down you can use it for ground sleeping so you're going to have a sleeping bag it acts just like a regular sleeping bag on the on the ground which is how we used it in the snow trench video and then you can use it on your hammock which is how i used it in my winter camping in a snowstorm video as well as my abandoned air force base video so you got that versatility there and it's just one purchase and then down the line, if you get top and bottom quilts separate, you still have yourself a great down sleeping bag for tent camping trips, car camping trips, stuff like that. So I think it's a great investment in terms of versatility, but i got to be honest, if I have the option to use top and under quilts, I'm going to do it. Back in the day before I invested in the top and under quilts, because it is a hefty investment, I would have loved to have had that system instead of kind of the finagling around that I did back in the early days trying to use pads and big old synthetic bags, but it was kind of a waste because it was in there with me, so I still had to have a pad and all this stuff. So it has its pluses and minuses. That's my answer to that. Number two, in some of your earlier videos where you're carrying, do you still carry? Uh, I think I know what you mean by carrying. Uh, with the current climate on YouTube, I'm just going to call it, you must mean the F word, and not that F word, but the other F word. I'm probably getting all the ads shut off on my channel as we speak and uh, buried at the bottom of YouTube's algorithms right now. If I say the full word, things are a little dicey right now. But yes, I do still carry, I can still carry, so you're never really gonna see it now. On my earlier videos, I didn't have all the licenses that I do now. So whenever legally possible, 
I definitely do that, but that's also because I do it on a daily basis in my regular life. That's a whole nother subject. In my personal situation, that's what I do, so I'm comfortable and legal to do it already. Should you do it just because you're going backpacking and you never do it in your regular life prior to this? No, probably not. You're adding a lot to your plate that you don't need. But in my case, I'm able to, I'm comfortable and trained to. So yeah, I do. I'm licensed and legal in 36 states. And if I'm able to do so where I'm backpacking, I'm definitely going to do it. Because if I do it at the mall, there's no way I'm going to not do it at a remote trailhead in the middle of nowhere or in the middle of the woods with a bunch of weird critters around. Not that I've ever had any problems with that, but peace of mind is a big thing. And then number three, when are you going to start taking your lovely wife and your four-legged buddy on more trips? Um, pretty soon now because the weather is warmer. So when the winter comes, you're going to see me and Mike torture ourselves and then also me torturing myself doing solo trips. But now that it's warming up, you'll see the dog and the wife come back out with me. Also says that I need to get to the Pacific Northwest Alpine Lakes Wilderness Area Enchantment Lakes Area. That sounds awesome. Once again, if I get the right flight deal, I'll be there. I'm gonna open a package now. I recognize this. This is Hangtime Hook. They've sent a couple other ones before and I've given them shout outs on the channel. And he makes little devices so that you can hang predominantly your cell phone from your ridge line in your hammock, which is the line that goes along the top. I have actually taken it. I took it on my winter hammock camping on the Appalachian Trail, a PPA video, and I watched uh, a video on my phone while hanging there and it worked great. So what do we got here? This is the base clip part that holds your phone. Oh, is this an accessory for one I already have? Oh, okay. Oh, nice. So the other ones I got were prototypes. They were like rough cuts from a 3D printer. This thing, and they worked just fine. I didn't even mind that. This thing looks professional. You have stepped your game up, sir. And this thing is smooth as butter. So thanks, man. The finished product is here. Um, I believe he has a Facebook page, and you can just order directly from him. It's a guy just doing his own thing. Um, capitalism in action, so that is awesome. Thanks, man. I'm looking forward to upgrading to that on my next trip. What do we got here? This is a fancy package. It's from Justin in Denver, Colorado. Oh, wow, look at that. Artwork. Between every two pine trees, there is a door leading to a new way of life. John Muir quote. Oh, my wife's going to love this. She loves John Muir quotes. This is great, man. Look at this. Hopefully it's focused on that. And on the back here, okay, it says, Sean, love the channel and you're in Sarah's content. Your videos are perfect for holding me over until I can get back out. Here's one of my fine art prints for you guys. Figured it's relevant. Hope you enjoy your trip back out to Colorado. Yep, that's coming. The Colorado trip is on the way. P.S. Uh, my wife and I, Frank and Ashley from the Iceland trip, if you've watched that video, we may have had a little wine and ordered some tickets to Sweden and we're going to Norway. So that's coming up uh, this year for our Scandinavian trip. Speaking of going on trips, but Colorado's coming too. And he also says, definitely want to hear more about sticking to keto on the trail. Yeah, a lot more people than I thought were interested in, in doing keto or already doing it. So I'll talk about that a little bit more here and there on the trip. Thank you, Justin. This is beautiful. We're going to hang this up somewhere. I really appreciate that. Uh, here we go. This is from Tom. He lives 45 minutes from the White Mountains. In the unlikely event I actually see you on the trail, what's the preferred protocol? And he has uh, A, B, C, D, and E. A, pretend I don't know you and keep walking. No, you don't have to do that. B, say hello syntax and keep walking. Wouldn't mind if you did that. Um, C, say hello syntax, offer you a cliff bar and follow you around. I like the cliff bar part. Um, following me around might be a little weird. All right, we're getting in the weird zone now. Or D, scream like a teenage girl watching the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show, wow, flattering, while demanding your autograph, and then follow you around in parentheses. And then E, none of the above. Um, I'm going to go D, scream like a teenage girl, pump my ego up, and then creep me out by following me around. So thank you. Here's your answer to that. All right, we're rolling along here. I got some other packages. These two here, I do know what these are. I was reached out to by, his name is Jack, and he's only 14 years old, actually. He's been watching the channel, and he reached out and said, he was asking about some questions, um, maybe on how to promote the fact that he started his own t-shirt company, uh, even as a website, it looks like. So he said, I'm gonna send you some clothing. So I thought he was sending a t-shirt, but what do we got here? His brand is Little Cub Outfitters. So I got myself a new sweatshirt, pullover. Thanks, Jack, looking good. This'll keep me warm and uh, put a link in the video description for where other people can check out these 
sweatshirts and very cool that at your age you are already thinking of business ideas super cool and then he sent me a follow-up separate package oh this one looks like a t-shirt and it feels really nice oh this one says seek adventure i like it i'll rock that for sure thank you again jack very cool i appreciate that so jack from little cub outdoors thank you put these right over to the side add that to my repertoire of clothing what else we got here No note or anything. It's a bunch of Frisbees. Small, lightweight Frisbees. Thank you. Um, I guess I, you know, it's lightweight. I like lightweight, so I can play with these. It's a game for the trail. Oh, we could, uh, we could play like uh, some sort of like beach style game out on the trail with these. Or maybe I can double purpose. Remember I said dual purpose redundancy earlier? Uh, maybe I could use it as a plate. Thank you for the Frisbees. I have seen those before in like REI. They have like the trail games. Has anybody out there ever done them? You know what I'm talking about? They're like small, relatively lightweight games you can play. Almost like I said earlier, games you would play on the beach, only it's for like at your campsite. It's one of those things you see and you're like, yeah, that'd be cool. And then you're like, if I carry that, are we really going to play that? I don't know. Does anybody use those things out there? But moving on, this right here is from Bill in... Uh-oh. I apologize if you're watching this. I'm getting your sticker to you. Sorry about that, buddy. Especially because you sent me a whole care package here. So let's see what we got from Massachusetts. Oh, I'm on a roll with t-shirts. Blue Hill, Massachusetts. Got the latitude and longitude on there. Representing Blue Hill. Anybody out there from Blue Hill? Is there any good hiking around there? Thanks for the shirt, man. Way too nice. Got some English breakfast black tea. Simple, lightweight, little treat on the trail. Especially in the afternoon, it's nice to have a hot beverage. Metal water bottle. It says Blue Hills Reservation on it as well. This is fancy. I wonder if you could like, this is one of the ones where it can handle being like heated up in a pinch if you really needed to sterilize some water. Metal water bottle is not something I've carried before, but be willing to look into the pros and cons. Anybody out there carry metal water bottles instead of plastic on your trips? Like I said, I don't know about this one. This one looks fancy, but I know a lot of people carry like the simple metal water bottles because you could hang it above a fire and sterilize or heat up water right in it. Kind of dual purpose. Cool, I like the map on there. It's kind of textured topo map. Now, okay. Now this, oh, I know why you sent this. I was really confused at first. This is Axl Rose and this took me a moment to figure out why did you send an Axl Rose bobblehead doll? I've never really talked about Guns N' Roses too much on the channel, although I do like them. But I think maybe this is a reference to when our dog Denali decided to dress up like Axl Rose on our Adirondacks part one video. That's pretty clever. Thank you, Bill. And then he also has in here a packet of the good stuff, little individual freeze-dried coffees. But this is Starbucks. I usually go with Nescafe because I'm a little cheap, but I do like these. They're really good. Thanks, man. Actually, speaking of the bottle, there's a little tag here. Liberty Bottles. So I'll look them up and uh, get the deets on it. Thank you, Bill. That is super cool. Ah, now this here, I did know was coming as well. Check this out. I've shown some small flashlights before for my ultralight fans out there, like this guy here. It's 600 lumens, and look how tiny he is. I have a whole separate video on it. It's the Olight uh, Mini Baton, the S1. But I feel like I could hear in the distance some of my fellow Graham weenies saying, nope, I want lighter. I want smaller which is pretty hardcore because this is pretty small. But look at this. Take it out of the box. <laughs> this is the new O-Light. Now it's pretty much anticipated to be on a keychain. Otherwise, I think you'd lose it or maybe tie a piece of rope around it, hang it on your pack, attach it to your pack, whatever you want to do. This thing is, I think it's 10 grams, and it goes up to 120 lumens in a pinch. And it also has a low mode, 5 lumens which I love five lumens. I find it plenty when it's dark out and your eyes have adjusted. Plenty of power. It'll do five lumens from what I read on the box right there for seven hours on a single charge. By the way, it is USB rechargeable. It's got a micro USB part right inside there. You can charge it on any wall charger or computer. So I'm gonna keep this on my keychain to test it out. But if you're really a gram weedy, there you go. It's uh, 160 lumens on high. That's pretty decent if you really need the spot and then a ton of uh, hours of light on five lumens and for me i can recharge it with the same battery pack i use for my camera gear 
It's the Olight 1R EOS. Thank you, Olight. We'll be checking that out. And that covers all of the mail I actually caught up. And let me just pick a couple comments real quick and then we'll wrap it up. This is from Alexander. He said, great, simple outing. This is on the budget backpacking trip video. He's the second person to mention this actually, so it's a good point. I've camped on a slope as well because in that video, and I know I didn't even notice how severe this, the slope was that we camped on Denali and I under that tarp because we slept right on the ground until I watched it back. And I was like, wow, that was a serious pitch. But uh, he says, I've camped on a slope as well, but with my feet pointed down the incline, less chance of a rollover. Absolutely makes sense. So yeah, and a couple other people at least said that as well. Basically, it was just, there was a lot of trees around there, but I finally found a clearing. So it's in terms of like larger stable trees for my tarp, it just happened to work out that it was running counter to the slope on the hill. So there wasn't really a great way for me to pitch my tarp in the direction of the hill. On top of that, I was just happy to finally find a clearing. So part of it was oversight on my part, and the other part was those were really just the best two trees I could find. Sometimes you just work with what you get. And it was really dense around there. Could I have spent another hour trudging around? Because I was bushwhacking. I was well off the trail. Yeah, I could have, but we were down to like two hours of sunlight when I got there. Just made that decision. But it's a good point. It'll keep you from rolling. and It'll keep the blood from rushing to your head. You wouldn't want to sleep with your head at the bottom, right? But, yeah, that's why I did that. All right, I think that kind of covers it. Uh, again, I apologize. The audio on this is not too great because apparently my mic died. But, anyway, that's that. So, if you want to weigh in on any of these topics, go ahead and do that in the video description below. Also, just a heads-up reminder for anybody out there who wants to support the channel in a way that doesn't cost you anything. If you shop at Amazon, if you're planning to do some shopping already, instead of going to Amazon.com, just go to Syntax77.com slash Amazon or just bookmark the link up here in the little info corner and Amazon will pop up as normal. You can do your shopping just like you always do, but they'll kick a small percentage back towards the channel and we'll use that to do future trips out on the trail and in the woods. So there you go. Thanks everybody out there. Till next time, I'm Syntax77 and you have fun out there.